Hi there, I'm John Nelson. Thank you for joining me again. So this is a map that we made in a previous video showing 330,000 iceberg historic locations and they're all stacked up on top of each other and they're only 1% opaque so you get this neat blending effect. But today we're going to learn how to animate these things through time. And because we're going to have in any one frame one twelfth about the number of icebergs overlapping each other. I'm going to kind of step back from that opacity trick in the earlier cartographic lesson we did and bring back the firefly symbology so that each symbol is visible. So in this case we're still doing graduated symbology. Small icebergs look small, larger icebergs look larger, and gosh isn't that cool just seeing stuff paint in like that? I love that. So uh, here we go. Let's first create an attribute for month. Now there are probably savvier ways of doing this sort of thing, but uh, a wonk like me will just kind of brute force this. So I'm going to create a new month attribute, just kind of make it a short uh, number type. And in it, I'm going to use the, um, the field calculator. Trust the old field calculator. I love this thing. So I'm going to populate these um, and I'm going to, I'm going to use a, an arcade expression arcade expressions they're great so here I've chosen arcade as my expression type and I'm gonna to point to the month or the date attribute that I have in the data so it's got a date attribute and I'm just gonna say month and then point to the date attribute and in this case I'm gonna say plus one because computer scientists always count starting at zero but guys like me, when thinking about months, start counting at one. So I'm going to say month plus one, which means January is one, February is two, etc. And so bang, there we go. There's a month attribute for us. And I can close this guy. And at this point, you know, let's just uh, let's take a look at what we've got. Here are all of those icebergs painting in again. But now that I've got just a month attribute, I can start. Um, creating copies of this layer in each copy I can restrict the view to only icebergs showing in each month and I can make you know, 12 discrete layers each showing one month's worth of data and when I say month I'm saying every month over like the 40 or so years of history that this data has so you're getting kind of like this neat month cross section across all the years which is really interesting so I'll do this by creating a definition query. A definition query is just a way of filtering your data. So in this case, I'm saying, hey, only show me the icebergs where month equals one. And then pop. I'm only seeing icebergs where they have been historically in January. And I'm going to rename this really quickly. And I'll turn it off because I'm about to do some copy and paste craziness. So this is the old designer's trick. Copy it select all of them, copy those, select all of them, copy those, and now I'm renaming them just to keep my brain squared away here, um, what month number each of them are. And then I go through and just update that definition query to match the date. Now, look how quickly I can click and type. Isn't that impressive? There I go. So uh, what I'm doing here is just making 12 discrete layers each uh, discrete month months 1 through 12 and just to show you what they look like here's 12 here's 11 and then here's month 10 now I'm going to use these in an animation so I'm gonna to go to the view tab and add an animation now turn on month 1 and pop I'll create a keyframe a keyframe in an animation is just a locked view of something and you can kind of interpolate between keyframes or just have a series of keyframes like a flipbook. And I'm going to do the latter. So in this case, I've selected month one, created a keyframe, and I've kind of adjusted its time a little bit so it, it runs a little snappier. And this is going to be a flipbook style of animation. Boom, 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 boom. So now I've uh, turned off January and I've turned on February. And pop, I say add a keyframe here. And then I just do that for all of the months but instead of having to wait for the icebergs to re-render every time I create a new keyframe you can do something in pro called pause rendering and that's that little pause button over in the bottom right hand corner of your map view 
I'm gonna hit pause it says okay you're paused I'm not gonna bother rendering everything and then I can just kind of crank out all these keyframes really quickly without having to wait for the the map view to drop I'll do that for all 12 Bring my rendering back just so I see what I'm doing take the blindfold off and I produce an animation that's it so I'll go to the animation tab and I uh, in this case I'm choosing a gif because animated gifs right it's 2019 we're still making animated gifs I like them they're easy to share they're very portable um, so here we go I hit uh, compile and, and it just uh, it takes a look at each of these views and for each keyframe it's not just remembering what it looked like when you were uh, creating keyframes it's it's re-rendering each keyframe in full resolution and here it is dancing iceberg so a bunch of months all at once you get this nice seasonal view of icebergs which is a lot of fun uh, please do not look at this list of things that we inadvertently covered in this video and thank you so much for joining me have a great day